You know, there are a lot of shitty movies that come across my desk. But the ones I loathe the most are the ones based on holidays. Now don't get me wrong, there are a few good ones out there like Groundhog's Day. I'm sorry, what was that again? I'm a god. You're a god. I'm a god. I'm not the god. I don't think. Or... Groundhog's Day. But most of them just shit slapped together with no real purpose other than to cash in on the holiday's name. And being a proverbial whore that I am, I'm going to do the same by reviewing for Mother's Day, Mother's Day Massacre. Mother's Day Massacre is a film written and directed by Jeff Roning about a teenage boy abused by his father who goes looking for his mother when him and his friends come across some semi-retarded redneck hillbillies in New Jersey. Yeah, last time I checked, there weren't too many hillbillies living in New Jersey. The movie pretty much relies on the fact that it has gore, murder, and rape in it. Because nothing says Happy Mother's Day like murder and rape. Our movie begins in the year 1990 in the gynecologist's office? Tch, fitting, since well, like having sex with a dirty hooker, watching this movie is most likely to give you something that you didn't really want and will probably have to carry with you for the rest of your life. We can take care of this with some antibiotics and a dose of hindsight. You have chlamydia. Happy Mother's Day! Realizing she caught the chlamydia from her husband, she goes to the house of the prostitute he's been sleeping with to confront her. So you know your husband's cheating, he gave you a clap, and who he's been cheating with, and you blame the other woman? This is going to be one of those movies where my head explodes due to lack of logic, isn't it? I don't do women. So they did rode on me. You are pure vile. God should never give a baby to a whore to sin. I know, right? They grow up to make trash like this. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We here at Cinemash of would like to ensure each and every one of you that there is no legitimate proof of Mr. Perrion's accusations. We do not know anybody responsible for the making of this film or any of their families, nor is there any evidence to support Mr. Perrion claims neither statistically or scientifically that bad movies being made or the results of being the child of a prostitute. Furthermore, we'd like to state that Mr. Perrion's statements are his own personal opinion and is no way representative of Cinemash of and all come up productions, even though he's a sole proprietor of both. We. Oui. After the prostitute talks about having sex with the woman's husband in their bed, the woman throws a cookie jar only to miss and knock a frying pan full of bacon into a baby's crib. Rather than taking the baby to the hospital and having the woman arrested for trespassing and aggravated assault on an infant, the prostitute proceeds to beat the woman to death with a frying pan. What's that you say? Third degree burns? Pfft, I'm sure that baby's fine. After the intro sequence, we cut to the present day. You know. If you're going to put a date on past events, you can't just put present day on later events because eventually the movie's going to become outdated. I mean, come on. I'm having a hard time believing that these two are two 22-year-old teenagers. This is Jim and his girlfriend Doreen, who for some reason we get to watch take a bath. Why? Who in their right mind thought that would be a good scene for this movie? I mean... Granted, the girl is hot and all, but I don't want to see them take a bath together. Despite the fact that the two are supposed to be underage, watching two people wipe dirt off each other isn't exactly erotic. Who the hell will be getting off on this? This is delicious! Yes! Yes! Oh my god. Oh my god. 
got my followers. Really? Is that the best you can do is play some obscure song and really, really low in post production? You couldn't even add the song actually playing outside. How hard is it to put a sound effect in your fucking movie? Look, it's easy. And all I did was take sound from later on in the movie and add it to this scene. You mean to tell me they really couldn't figure that much out? Do people use smartphones to do dumb things? His father walks in on him in the bathroom. Why is his father walking in on him in the bathroom? Finds Doreen in the shower and proceeds to act like a creepy asshole version of Masaroshi. Leave her alone. What are you doing? Yeah, he really looks like he's trying hard to stop his father, dude. That was about as convincing as Satan turning over a new leaf. Come here, little thing. Listen up. If you're just looking for a good time, you'd do better by knocking on my door. Stop. Get out of here. His father then starts verbally abusing him and... Yeah, this is a bit uncomfortable even for me. Next scene. Next scene! Okay, we get a random scene of a guy putting up a flyer for a missing dog. Why not? Makes as much sense as anything else we've seen so far. Later that night, Jim goes to Darlene's house to apologize for his father. What the hell was wrong with your dad? Let's go down the list. Number one. He's crazy. What's that? I can't hear you over <laughs> crickets. Anyway, she asks him why he can't live somewhere else, like with his mom, but Jim doesn't know where his mom is. We then cut eight weeks later with Doreen in the hospital. Don't know why. The movie never tells us. My guess is she has a hole in her uterus. And why does the background music sound like the story to Lord of the Rings? It's Jim then takes her out of the hospital to a park where they try to establish some character development around events we know absolutely nothing about. Exposition movie. It's called fucking exposition. I'll, you alone. I'll never talk to you again, I promise. I won't bother you. This wasn't your fault. What was this for? I have no idea what the fuck is happening. Some days later, I only know that because he's wearing different clothes, he's searching through his father's shed, which his father tells him to stay out of, where he finds the missing dog. Why? How long did his father have the dog? Why did his father take the What does this have to do with anything? Nothing! Absolutely nothing! His father shows up right after he finds an old 8mm tape, so he's forced to hide to no avail. Realizing his son is under the floor, his father takes great pleasure in peeing on him. So first his father grabs his dick, and then he gives him a golden shower. Why do I feel like this entire movie is nothing more than the writer's secret fantasy? Good evening ladies and gentlemen. We here at Cinemastrophy would like to inform you that Don Perignon is a complete asshole. Clearly he was dropped on his head as a child suffering from brain damage causing him to be completely insensitive to other people's feelings. Furthermore, we'd like to state that if he didn't own the company and every single one of us, he would have been fired a long time ago. Thank you. He goes to his neighbor Jen's house to clean off while his father gets a phone call from a hypnotist friend of his. Hello. Hey, it's me. Oh, hey, Sid. She's ready. She's on the couch. Oh, really? She's hot. All right, I'll be over. Yeah, Having taken the tape with them, the two decide that they're going to look at it while Jen's father rapes a woman. Hey, Sid. I'm about to show you a cigar, a pink cigar. There's nothing in the whole world you want more than to smoke this cigar. It is revolting! Whoa! What's with that rifle? 
Foreshadowing. The two put on the movie and it's just some woman lying naked. Okay. Thanks for that. No Jim way. seems particularly disturbed by this movie. I don't understand why. <laughs> And now for something completely different. At a drive-in movie, we get to see more of Jim's friends. Like, drive-in movie? Do those even exist anymore? Or do they all just travel back to 1955? This is Bobby and Gary, who have nothing better to do than to talk about Gary's girlfriend's cooch being dry. Have you tried using lube? Whoa, what was with that random moonshot? Are they trying to remind us that it's nighttime? I'm pretty sure we can figure that out. Unless someone's gonna turn into a werewolf, I don't need to be looking at a fucking moon! Doreen managed to track Jim's mother's last location to a town called Johnsonville, which just happens to be the same town that Bobby and Jen saw a marijuana crop growing, so they all decide to go there together. What is this, alien vision? I thought this movie resembled AVP2. Whoa. 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 Bobby. God, take it easy. Yeah, Bobby. You almost made it seem like something interesting was going to happen. Getting to the town and realizing it's a bored up piece of shit and there's no possible way that Jen's mother could live there, the next logical step is to play hide and go seek, of course. Gary's it. Why am I it? Because you're an asshole. Mind you, we're 30 minutes into the 70 minute movie and not one person has gotten killed yet. Well, it was that, but exposition killings never really count in horror. Oh, look, more alien vision. And count to 100, alright? Wait, 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 wait. If I'm in, I should have a flashlight. Why? It's 3 o'clock on a sunny July afternoon. You expected a fucking eclipse? Instead of playing hide and go seek, Doreen and Jim decide to look around the town a little bit where they find a half eaten dog in one of the houses and a room full of disturbing pictures while Bobby and Jen are trying to have sex. <laughs> Well, that's what happens when you do a Rolling Thunder and Hershey's Chocolate. Oh, and... Someone die already! Meeting Bobby and Jen outside, they tell them about the dead dog and the pictures. Being a dick that Bobby is, rather than getting everybody together and getting the fuck out of there, he decides that he wants to see it for himself. I'm sorry? Meanwhile, Gary thinks he sees his girlfriend go behind the door, so he sticks his dick in the hole. Here, steppy, 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 steppy. Come and get some. Surprise! Okay, okay, actually someone grabs his dick and refuses to let go. My god, we are almost 40 minutes into this movie. Will someone die already? Yes! After showing Bobby the room, they leave him in there by himself to beat off, I guess, I don't know. While Gary's girlfriend is busy getting maced in the face. I guess she didn't see that Winnie the Pooh PSA. And so that's why it's important to be sissy fish. I'm, I mean... Oh, it's suspicious. That's it. Be suspicious of all strangers. <laughs> <laughs> you be quiet now. Hearing her scream, they decide their best plan of action is to get Bobby and get the hell out of there. Who is busy peeing on the bed in the room? Man, that's just me. That's mean, man. This unfortunately gets the attention of the guy with the axe who kills Bobby to the background music of which sounds like an underground garage band making up the notes and lyrics as they go along. Back to the Three Stooges. After getting in the car and a really poor attempt at pretending to be scared, someone throws a watermelon at the car, proving that the real mastermind behind all this is Gallagher. Start with the watermelon! Ah! And then Bobby hits the car. How did he get... Uh, uh. Inconceivable! Bobby! Bobby, 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 Bobby. Johnny's dead, Jim. Even though they now have the key, rather than leaving and getting the police, they decide to go looking for Gary and his girlfriend. It came from the basement. We're not going down there. No fucking way. Fuck this. Let's just get out of here. Oh, no. God forbid. They do the sensible thing and yada, yada, yada. 
Yeah, because they lack any real common sense, they go down there anyway. Staff? So after basically telling the guy to leave them alone, he does just that. God, this really is a Three Stooges skit. Let's go. What about Jen? Fuck her. I'm out of here. Nice choice in women there, Jim. She's a real class act. Anyway, they managed to escape and... One week later? Jesus, it's like this script was written by an 18 year old with ADHD. And why aren't any of them traumatized? Jim's over there doing yard work while Jen is over there working out on a treadmill. Shouldn't they be in therapy or something? They just watch their friends get killed. Okay, maybe I'm jumping the gun here. Perhaps the movie will give us a logical explanation for all this. So how are you feeling? Other than everyone trying to feed me tranquilizers, I'm okay. You? Oh, I'm, I'm okay. See? It completely makes sense. So, if you haven't figured it out yet... STOP IT! Those two guys are the children of the hooker we saw earlier in the movie. When the cops go to Johnstown looking for them, they seize their entire marijuana crop. Since Jim was the reason the cops was up there to begin with, she goes to see Jim's father seeking compensation. The way I figured, if your boys hadn't gotten out of hand, you'd still be neck deep in stink bud. The movie drops the dust feather on us that he's their father, making Jim their half-brother. What a twist! Because he points out the fact that, well, she's a whore and denies any claim to the children, the argument gets a little heated. Maybe I got a little old for you and your little binga! Voice down. Puta! Go fuck yourself! Holy <laughs> puta! Marico! I don't know what she's so upset about. The way I see it is, he saved our trip to the dentist later. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. You know what? I'm trying to make an excuses for him, so fuck it. This leads to her bitch rant that goes on forever. I could see if it was funny, but it's just annoying. I'm gonna kill you, motherfucker! I come here to make me fuck you, but now I'm gonna fuck you up! You wanna call a big upon you? You hold the puta, marico! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! She goes to get her two sons so they can all go out on the warpath. We're going down to paint that gringo down red with gringo blood! My god, I haven't seen this much ham since. Have you good? Can you carry on from your rage? <laughs> Meanwhile, Jim's father is leaving for the night. Brother Dennis is back from ROTC, but he's taking a nap, so don't wake him up. Taking advantage of his father not being home, Jim invites Jen over to watch a movie with him, but Doreen shows up unannounced before Jen arrives. Because of her accent in Johnstown, Jim doesn't really want to be associated with Doreen anymore and is trying to get rid of her when the Manson family shows up. After killing Jim's older brother, they plan on killing Jim and Doreen too, but not before the hooker reveals that not only did she kill his mother, but his father helped cover it up. Fortunately, Jim's father returns just in time. I don't know. I guess his hooker sense was tingling or something. As far as I can tell, nothing's gone beyond the point of no return yet. They killed your eldest son! So yeah, for some strange reason, he decides to help them cover up this murder too. Dude, I think the fact that your wife and your son weren't missing is gonna look a little suspicious. I don't like that little bitch. 
How do we keep her quiet? Sorry, Red. <laughs> My dad shot her. It was weird. <laughs> Jen shows up, shooting Jim's father in the arm and blowing a hooker's head off. With their mother dead, the kids don't know what to do, so they just run off. Then the police show up, even though nobody called them, and Jim's father plays the victim. Jesus Christ, thank God you're here! She's trying to kill us! Drop the gun now! Fuck that, he's lying! What? Just drop the gun and let the police sort it out later! I'm sure Jim will vouch for you! Well, I guess it's too late now. The movie ends with the big guy becoming a trucker, Jim's father leaving town with his hypnotist friend, and Jim ends up in a mental institution with his brother. Half-brother. Whatever. This movie was bad. Really, really bad. I thought Rubble was bad. At least they had the excuse of following the no reason concept. There is no excuse for failure of such an epic proportion. If they could somehow get people to watch this movie, it would go down in history as the worst horror movie ever made. It is filled with padding, storylines are brought in and never ever really resolved, or worse, never ever explained. Whatever character development there is in this movie is either stupid, unclear, or just plain annoying. None of the characters are likable or relatable. Shit. And you know what the worst part is? This movie has absolutely nothing to do with Mother's Day. I'm Don Perignon saving you from getting ripped off. Now if you excuse me, I have to go thank my mother for not being a drug dealing Mexican prostitute with bad teeth.